And then we are going to start the discussions for the 2023 ERI or the Environmental Resource Inventory. We're gonna try not to use acronyms. If there is anyone here and we accidentally use an acronym, please raise your hand, feel free to raise your hand and ask for an explanation. Um, I would like to acknowledge that we actually have a fair amount of individuals here tonight with us, um, such as Deanna Stockton, who's the deputy administrator. And we have Justin uh, Lesko, who is our planning director. We also have Louise Wilson on, who is the planning board chair. So we have a fair amount of individuals um, with us tonight. And I wanna thank you for joining us uh, for this for this meeting, this very important discussion that we're going to have and more information learning. So next on the agenda is um, the ERI. And so I would like for Cindy Taylor to introduce herself and then let our um, uh, the consultants from Echo Tone introduce them as well. Thanks, Tammy. Um, I'm Cindy Taylor. I'm the open space manager for Princeton. And then if Ben and Ryan could turn on their cameras and introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ryan with Ecotone. And I'm Ben with Ecotone. Share my screen and kick us off. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right, All right. so. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Cindy Taylor. I'm the open space manager for Princeton. Uh, I'll be the staff person for the municipality who's um, directly interacting with our consultants, Ecotone, to renew the environmental resource inventory. Just want to take a moment, since I think there's some uh, people on this call who I haven't met with directly yet, um, just to give a little background on my role. Um, the open space manager position is new for Princeton municipality. I started about a year ago and I work under uh, Dana Stockton, who's on the call, our deputy administrator, head of uh, infrastructure and operations and our municipal engineer. Um, but the work that I do spans lots of departments as I think all of our work does, planning, engineering, public works and recreation. Um, and so far I've been involved with the planning stages of acquiring uh, open space land for conservation, implementing projects on land that we own, and then some of the maintenance for that land as well. Um, so just a quick agenda of what we're going to go through today. I'm just going to briefly talk about what our goals are for the meeting. Uh, I'll give a little background on what an environmental resource inventory is and why we're doing it and the expectations we can have from it. Um, I'll share the new recreation and open space map, which is hot off the press as of this morning. And then I'll pass it over to Ecotone to go over what our general outline and timeline is for the 2023 ERI. And then we'll have time for public comment and feedback. So the purpose of us being here today uh, is initially just to provide general information about environmental resource inventories, which I will refer to as an ERI from here on out, and our plans for the 2023 update. We also wanted to uh, have a public meeting in order to get public feedback. Um, we'll be doing, or Ecotone we will be presenting on the types of analysis that we have planned, but we wanna know if anyone in the public has a specific question regarding Princeton's environmental resources. Um, obviously what we can do uh, or what we can analyze is limited by available data and our budget, but we wanna hear everyone's ideas. Uh, we want to make sure that we haven't overlooked something that's possible or important or something that's perhaps specific to Princeton. Uh, the second um, type of public feedback we're looking for is anyone who has knowledge or data regarding a subject and wants to contribute to the, ER, the ERI process. So Princeton's pretty rich with a lot of passionate, knowledgeable professionals, citizen scientists, and volunteers. Um, so if you have data that can be incorporated, if you are a specialist in something to do with natural resources, please feel free to reach out to me um, and, and we can chat about where that might fit in with the ERI. My contact is at the bottom of the screen, ctaylor at princetonnj.gov. Okay, so a little bit of information about what an ERI is. 
It's a compilation of texts, tables, maps, and other information about the natural resource characteristics and environmentally significant features of an area. That's its standard um, definition. It's a dynamic document which is revised and updated periodically. The standard to update it is about once every 10 years per the Association of New Jersey Environmental Commissions and Sustainable Jersey. Um, the document will ultimately be adopted as part of the master plan. And essentially what we're doing is gathering information that can be used to make land use decisions. Um, it's important to note that most of this process and what the document ultimately will give us is um, information gathering and analysis. Ecotone is going to work collaboratively with, collaboratively with me and local experts to provide interpretation for that data that we collect. Um, and where it's appropriate, they might provide recommendations for stewardship and management. But the recommendations that come out of an ERI are not binding. Um, an ERI is not meant to be a management plan. And the reason for this is that all land management decisions must take into account a wide variety of needs. So needs. So environmental, yes, of course, and those are the things that we'll look at, but also traffic safety, housing, public services, things of that sort, which are not being analyzed here. So we're going to be taking advantage of Ecotone's land management experience and knowledge by way of recommendations, but again, it's not by a binding part of the ERI. Uh, on the right side of your screen, you can see the cover page for Princeton's last ERI, which was completed in 2010. Uh, the URL for that document is at the bottom of the page, but if you're watching this on your computer and you have your phone handy, uh, you can take a picture of the QR code and that'll direct you to where you can download the document. And the 2023 update will serve um, basically as an update to this. It'll expand analysis where resources and data are available, and it's not meant to be its own standalone ERI. The two documents both can be used to make municipal decisions. So I've been working with Ecotone over the last couple of months um, just to create the map you see on your screen right now. This is a new recreation and open space map for Princeton. Um, the goal here was to get all of the data regarding our open space in one place so it can be cleanly viewed and analyzed. We had this information all in the municipality, but it was dispersed between deeds, some tax maps, Excel sheets, um, and not easy to kind of answer quick questions about how much open space do we have and how many parks do we have. So now we've got this map, which ultimately has underlying data sets that are easy to manipulate and um, analyze. So we tried to capture as much as we could through this first pass. Um, moving forward, the map will change over time as we learn more about properties, as we buy more properties for conservation, as private landowners conserve their land with maybe not profits or other partners. So this map could be out of date by tomorrow, um, and we'll just continually update it as we learn more about what's going on in town. So looking at how we made this map, we included areas that are designated as a municipal or state park. We included um, areas that are restricted from some development with tools such as a conservation easement, a deed restriction, or through stipulations of a subdivision. And I'm not going to use today's meeting to kind of go into the, the differences of those three tools, but essentially all of them are legally binding ways to restrict the type of development you can do on a property. Um, the third thing that we looked at was any properties that were protected by Green Acres regulations. Um, Green Acres is a New Jersey state program that was created in 1961 to help fund recreation and conservation needs. So as a recipient of that money, um, any Princeton-owned parks and open space are restricted to just recreation open space uses. So again, just another type of parcel that might have some sort of environmental or use restriction to it. And then we also included land that's open by our open space nonprofit partners. So that includes DNR Greenway, Ridgeview Conservancy, Friends of Princeton Open Space, um, the Watershed Institute, and New Jersey Conservation Foundation. What we didn't include on this map are um, private golf courses that don't have any environmental restrictions on them. We didn't include things like school play playgrounds, and we did not include areas that are uh, by description, natural open space areas, but 
don't have any environmental restrictions. So we really tried to capture just what we have today and what what will stay like this um, in some legally binding way. And then just to quickly analyze the numbers that we got from doing this map, uh, about 3,202 acres are designated as recreation and open space in Princeton, and that accounts for about 27% of our land. Um, and about 40% of that is owned by the municipality, and the other 40% is owned by private landowners who have put environmental restrictions on their properties. And with that, I'll just toss it over to Ecotone to go through their timeline. Thank you, Cindy. Let me know when you can see. I can see it. <laughs> Great. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go through what we've done and uh, as consultants for Princeton and a timeline of the continuing work as well as a, kind of an outline and plan of uh, the work moving forward. Get this started. So we began obviously with the uh, open space map uh, it was a lot of data collection, review, and merging of a bunch of different um, data sets, but we got a really highly accurate file out of it. Um, because of the size and the volume of the attributes, it's good. it was the most labor intensive of our analysis moving forward. So um, after that, we're gonna be continuing to update each chapter of the uh, 2010 environmental resource inventory, ERI. <laughs> um, then we're gonna be moving forward with uh, field verifications in April and May. This is because uh, most of our field, we, we believe our field work verifications are probably gonna be vegetation-based and the best time to get out in the field for vegetation is in the spring because some, some uh, species die off before summer's end. So after our field verifications on some of the analyses that we're gonna be continuing, uh, we'll finish up with more analyses that really won't require any kind of field verifications. And then our plan is to finish it off in the fall because the uh, master planning will be done in November, 2023. And they'll be needing, they'll be needing our data to support that effort. Um, they're most, the most important pieces of data we'll be providing them is the uh, open space data that'll be continually updated, the land use and some habitat data and statistics. So what exactly are the analyses that we'll be completing? Um, to put it in perspective, 2010, in 2010 when the last ERI was done, um, technology and data sets weren't as strong as they are now. So we're gonna be conducting analyses that weren't done in 2010 and analyses that were done in 2010 to compare, but with newer data and newer technologies and tools. Um, because this is time sensitive, we do have to prioritize our analyses. So there may be analyses that we could do, but maybe we don't have time for. Um, and that's why we wanna get some feedback tonight. Um, because this is a flexible plan that's based on workload and it's also based on feasibility and the goals of the municipality. Um, it's also based on how good our data is. I know Cindy said it before, but basically we're only as good as our data can allow us to be. So good data equals good analysis. So I'm gonna jump in to each, basically the next slides are gonna be a chapter um, that we're updating from the 2010 ERI. So at the most basic and general level, we'll have uh, population statistics and data. Um, the, last, the last ERI was uh, based on 2000 census data. That was because um, when a census is done, say in like 2010, it usually takes a year or two for that data to actually be available. So it wasn't available to them the 20, 
10 census data wasn't available to them uh, when they completed it. So we're going to be comparing data from, you know, 23 years ago. Um, the most important analytics from this is going to be population statistics, such as uh, health, poverty, race, median housing values, age statistics, um, and so on. The, uh, our next chapter is going to be geology, topography, and soils. So we have already dug into this and in comparing the new data sets with the 2010 ERI, there's really no difference in the geology and topography within Princeton, and that's really to be expected. So um, on the slide there, you see New Jersey DEP, GIS, that stands for uh, New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Geographic Information Systems Data. <laughs> so that's a lot to say. So if you see DEP on this, New Jersey DEP, moving forward, it stands for uh, the Department of Environmental Protection. They have a lot of uh, GIS data <clears throat> that's available. So we've been comparing a lot of that data from 2010 to newer data sets that are available. Um, one thing that is updated is the soil mapping in Princeton. So we will be updating the soil statistics such as uh, the percent and acreage of prime farmland in Princeton, highly erodible soils in Princeton, hydric soils and soils of statewide importance. These we feel like are the most important parameters that are actually gonna be used in um, land decisions for the municipality. And this analysis is almost uh, completed already. So next chapter that we're updating is land use. Um, the data from for land use is coming from the New Jersey Geographic Information Network. So that's different than the um, Department of Environmental Protection. So that data is from 2015, and then Mercer County also has data from 2012. So these data sets are newer than what was used in 2010. Um, the work's going to be completed for this in conjunction with kind of working the open space data, um, continually updating the open space data. Um, the 2010 ERI actually used data from 2002. So this will be um, a really good and important update. Um, the most uh, important analysis we'll be running here is land ownership breakdowns, vacant land, uh, acreage, acreage of agricultural lands, urban lands, forest. Um, one limiting factor here is that these are going to be based on existing data sets from uh, the sources I, I previously said. Um, we're going to do that just to give it, we're using the same data sets that are updated that were used uh, in the 2010 ERI to have a, a fair comparison. But that being said, in subsequent uh, chapters, such as the hydrology and vegetation chapters, we'll actually be doing brand new analyses and tools uh, and creating brand new data sets. Uh, so moving into that, the hydrology, we looked through some of the hydrology data already, and uh, there's really no big updates in, from uh, the 2010 ERI to today's data for drinking water. Um, but what we are gonna do is get a linear footage of stream and acreage of wetland ponds and lakes, the acreage of FEMA 100 year floodplains, which are updated pretty frequently, and the number and acreage of vernal pool habitats within uh, Princeton. So a lot of this data is going to be coming from the state of New Jersey and Rutgers. Um, we are probably going to use LIDAR to verify some of the vernal pool mapping. Um, so there's a lot of data sets that need to be merged to uh, get the most accurate hydrology data. Um, as you can see at the bottom of the, the slide here, there's three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven different, basically, there's seven different data sets that have hydrology data from Princeton. Um, some, some include some features and others don't include some features uh, looking into the data pretty, pretty deeply. Um, 
So we think the best thing to do here is to merge them all together to get a more, uh, a better, a better outlook on exactly what kind of water resources are in Princeton. <clears throat> the next chapter that we're going to be working on is vegetation. This chapter is probably going to be the most labor intensive, uh, second to the open space map. And that's because there's just a lot of analyses to do by hand. And there's just also large data sets to work with. Um, so our big goals in this chapter is to update the acreage and inventory of forest, meadow, and riparian buffer within the municipality. Uh, we want to compare that to 2010. Um, and we also want to compare it to historic aerials, uh, specifically for forest. We can, at a minimum, we can do this. We can actually separate evergreen forests to deciduous forest using uh, winter and summer imagery. We have a really good aerial tool called Near Map, and you'll see the tool in the next slide. But uh, basically, we can take Near Map imagery that's very recent, up to like last, you know, last October, and we can run tools that'll basically. Um, get an acreage of all forest cover, both in summer and winter. Um, the big hurdle here is gonna be finding historic aerials. So actually, if anyone knows where historic aerials may be located, we can geo-reference them and, uh, and get an acreage, a historic forest acreage within the municipality. So here's a screenshot of, uh, of near map. I did a little split here because you can see just uh, north of the ball field and the, the football field at the university. You can see that there's construction in October 22. Um, and you can see on the right side in November 2016 that it looks like it was some kind of pavement or parking lot or an old building. Um, so these are this is just a, one example of a tool that we'd be using in conjunction with our GIS uh, software. So continuing the vegetation, um, a, a pretty big goal of Princeton is to get some invasive species analysis going. Um, and really, we're going to be, our analyses are only going to be as good as the data that we're using for this. Um, so we're using data from the New Jersey strike team, uh, EDS maps, and iNaturalist, and if you don't know what iNaturalist is, it's a it's a crowdsourcing it's a crowdsourcing mapping tool that anyone can go on and basically, you know, if you're out at a park and you see a species, you can take a picture of it, identify it, and uh, and upload it to the map, and we can actually pull that information that you took into our data sets and use it for the invasive species uh, analysis. We really want to uh, identify areas that are lacking in invasives that are within open space areas. This is because um, more, more areas than that, I'd say, are, are controlled by invasive species. So we want to see the areas that are not controlled by in invasive species because we can do some uh, conservation work there or you know, make recommendations for that. Uh, and this is where we see us using uh, field visits. And during our field visits, we'll be collecting some data online uh, with an RTK GPS and um, Esri products, which is Esri is, um, is basically the software, the parent company of the software that we use. Um, oh, well, just to go back to um, Davy Tree is actually Davy Tree is another contractor uh, or consultant, and they're conducting a street tree inventory. Uh, when that street tree inventory is done, we're also going to add that to our data set because um, a lot of street trees, well, no, I shouldn't say a lot, but there could be some street trees that are non-native that were planted in the past. And so that data is going to be available within about a month. Um, so this is this is the uh, tools that we'll use when we go out in the field. Basically, we're using a, a a GNSS. I don't know what that stands for exactly, but it's a it's a GPS 
device that's a global positioning system um, that pairs up with a Bluetooth device. So like your phone, a tablet, or what have you. Um, and then on the phone, we have Esri powered uh, maps and we can basically make custom made maps with things already loaded in there. We can collect things in the field. We can take photos and, uh, and save them within that online map. And then we can actually download all of that field data and put it into our um, data sets. So our next chapter that we'll be working on after that is uh, our client, uh, Princeton's climate um, data. So previously, um, there's been some questions about green carbon and carbon sequestration within Princeton. There was some work done previously in 2019 for that. Um, we may have time to run a new analysis if there's, it's kind of a, it's a new field and the equations and the things that go into calculating this um, are ever changing like within a month. So we may be able to get some different numbers or some new numbers from 2019 uh, based on you know the, the evolution of the science. Uh, the, but the, the big things that we really wanna compare and see from 2010 is uh, the rainfall, storm frequencies and temperature data. This really goes into, um, it'll really give Princeton a good idea of planning for climate change, such as like species and, and forest change, as, as well as hydrology changes. The more rainfall, obviously, the more, the more wetlands we may have. Um, and this data is going to be coming from the New Jersey State Climatologist and Rutgers, as well as NOAA, which is the National Oceanic, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly. Um, atmospheric. Thank you. <laughs> atmospheric administration. administration. I had to Google it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, this work um, isn't going to be done. This analysis is probably going to be done towards the end of the summer. Uh, that's just because none of this data we really need to field verify. We'd, we'd rather get all of the data that, we'd rather run all the analyses that we want to field verify first, just because I said that, you know, like I said, there's that time window that we really want to be out in the field verifying things. So this will be done more late summer, fall. Um, uh, the next chapter is connectivity. So this is just an inventory of bike paths, hiking trails, sidewalks, uh, public parking. We wanna point out specific areas where there's habitat connectivity. And a lot of this data is gonna be coming from all trails and the New Jersey Geographic Information Network. That's what uh, GIN stands for there. Um, from this, we can run like proximity tools that can show us what neighborhoods are the most connected to um, public areas and open space and, and hiking trails and such, but it can also show us areas that are underserved as well. So kind of jumping in, bouncing off of that uh, is the value and equity chapter. So we wanna take a look at and analyze green space deserts. Uh, the definition of a green space desert is an area that's not is not within a half mile from a green or open space so we again like i was saying we can run proximity tools from open space areas and trails and such and find areas that are not within a half mile of them and then the municipality can use that data to as for their master planning um, another thing we'll be looking at is environmental justice data so that's poverty and minority data, as well as uh, overburdened communities and affordable housing areas. So we want to map that and get their proximity, their proximities to open space. This data is coming from uh, the federal environmental justice mapping and uh, New Jersey's geographic information network, as well as some uh, some data from Princeton. So next chapter is wildlife and habitat. So um, 
we want to try and put it in the words here, but we want to see where rare and endangered species are and compare it to 2010. Um, we want to see how much how much change there's been, how much more widespread some endangered species are. Um, and that's for, just to, to clarify, that's vegetation endangered species. Um, but we're also gonna be looking at rare and endangered uh, wildlife as well. These data sources are gonna be widely crowdsourced. So some crowdsourcing data sources we'll be using is eBird, and iNaturalist. eBird is basically iNaturalist, but just for birds. So you can make an account on eBird. You can go out and if you're a birder, you can um, inventory what you've seen and where. Uh, we can actually download that information and put it into our, um, into our own data sets. So there's also a deer density study that's being done by another consultant called Stuart Green. Um, they're actually using infrared technology to find basically a heat map of where the most deer are in Princeton. So we'll have that available to us as well. Bouncing off that is the critical areas. So we're gonna be identifying lands that we believe are best for conservation and uh, have unique habitats that maybe they have rare and endangered species. So uh, this will be one of the last analyses that we'll perform, that we'll per perform sorry, <laughs> um, because we're gonna be basically using all of the other analyses that we did before to finish this analysis up. So this will probably be like the last analysis that we do. Um, and like Cindy said, we'll probably make some recommendations based on this analysis. Um, none of it's binding, it's just, uh, you know, basically, hey, this area here um, is so, so, and so based on these analyses, you know, you might want to look at it for um, conservation. Uh, within, the, within the ERI, we'll have uh, appendices such as like uh, the bird species list from eBird. Um, on the right there is the New Jersey strike teams, uh, invasive species. Well, it's just a page out of it, but there'll be a whole list of uh, all the invasive species that the strike team has identified within the state. Um, so if you have any questions or, you know, wondering where some of this data is coming from, it's gonna be at the end of the ERI within the references and appendices. A lot of this data, by the way, is all public domain. So if you want to play with it yourself, uh, a lot of it's downloadable. Uh, the references will be at the end of the ER ERI. You can go to the links and look at this data yourself. So with that, I will take any questions. Thank you, Cindy, Ryan, and Ben um, for that presentation. And what I'd like to do is, if you can, Ryan, just to stop sharing your screen. Gotcha. Thank you. And then what we'll do now is we will open it up to the public to ask um, any questions that you might have. And just so you're aware, if you can state your full name, um, and also know that uh, we have a time of a time limit of three minutes, so we will have to time. If you want to raise your hand, please feel free to do that to ask your question. You can also, um, if you're not comfortable with coming on camera and asking your question, it's fine to um, put your question in the chat. And I can read those if that's more comfortable for you. I'm not seeing any hands raised at all at this point. Just give it a minute. Just so this is the public's opportunity to ask questions about the ERI or in the environmental resource inventory. I'll just throw something out there because possibly um, not everybody knows what crowdsourcing is. So that's something that 
I thought it would be good, Ryan, if you could just briefly, you know, explain what that is. And I will tell people that the Environmental Commission did this exact same thing for our Community Science Day. So where we all got together and went on a lovely tour of Rogers Refuge and had the iNaturalist um, app downloaded to our phone and collected this data. So that's a good example, but maybe if Ryan, if you can, you know, just explain it real quick in a sentence or two. Sure, I guess, um, am I still, um, I'm not muted, okay. Um, so it's pretty much data that's collected by non-professionals and the public. Um, and the ones that we're gonna be using are verified. So if you, let's say use iNaturalist and you you know, make an observation and you report it to iNaturalist, um, it's gonna take three other people to agree with your uh, observation for it to be verified. And then that kind of gives the data some, uh, some, some quality so that we can trust it and use it. Perfect, thank you, that was excellent. The verifiable data is important, right? Yes. If it wasn't verifiable, we wouldn't use it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see that we do have a couple of public members that are on camera. Did you want to ask a question? Lee, yeah, thank you. I see your hand um, ra uh, raised. So Lee, uh, am I saying your last name right? Varian? Correct. Would you from, like to ask your from question? From Roger, Roger's Refuge. Oh, Thank wonderful. You. And I use you as an example. <laughs> Question, is the uh, new open space map actually available online today? Maybe. So I believe Cindy can answer that. We just talked about that, right? <laughs> yeah, Lee, we're gonna put it on the Environmental Commission's website. It's not online yet, um, but hopefully by the end of the week, I think. And when it's on, I'll email you personally and share it with you. Thank you. <laughs> I think also just for everybody on the, um, or that uh, joined us. The other thing is that the whole presentations will be filed. So um, uh, Cindy's presentation, as well as Ryan's presentation, they'll both be on our webpage as well. So you, you'll be able to see those presentations that were just presented. Um, actually, Tammy, just so I can put this caveat out now, there are some changes between what was shown on the uh, 2010 protected lands map and what's on the new map. Um, and that's partly because we try to go through and verify what was protected as much as possible. Um, and we also got really specific with the data. So um, some of our parcels are considered open space in between like condominiums and apartments. And um, Ben from Ecotone actually went through and cut out all of the buildings of our data set so that when we calculate the actual acreage of open space, we're not including those. Um, so it looks a little different. The numbers look um, not as much more as you'd expect from 2010, but that's because we kind of went through with a finer tooth comb this time. All right, thanks for that. For I see a couple comment. more hands up. Do we have hands up? Yep. Okay, sorry, I see now. Okay, um, Erica and then Louise I have up in my screen. So Erica, do you wanna unmute yourself and say state your um, full name for us, please? I'd be happy to, Tammy. Uh, Erica Mosner, and I'm a resident of Princeton Community Village. And um, I hadn't planned to say anything, but this is wonderful to see this presentation. Always, always impressive work going on in, in Princeton. Uh, so for those people who don't know, Princeton Community Village is a subsidized housing development here in Princeton. And this is maybe a little bit too micro versus this is a much of a macro report. But I just would love to say that um, I hope that the village doesn't get overlooked in, in any of these analyses. Uh, because sometimes we seem to be <laughs> overlooked, I don't know, because we're maybe, um, you know, nonprofit, uh, managed by nonprofit, but there are many people who live in the village or are very conscious of these sorts of issues, and we do have 
um, problems with uh, maintenance of our trees and shrubs. Again, that's more micro than this plan is, but I know that people in the village like myself would be happy to help in any way. Um, and uh, and also I'd like to say that I know nothing about any of these things, but if you need people, you know, just citizens to help out in any way, I'd be happy to participate. Thanks. Thank you, Erica. I'll let Cindy um, kind of answer that question. Yeah, um, Erica, I'd be happy to chat with you offline later on and we can chat about, you know, maybe data collection that we can do near the village. Um, and also, I think um, part of our, uh, an important part of our analysis is, uh, you know, equity and connectivity and making sure that we don't have these underserved or looking to see where we do have underserved areas as far as parks and um, open space. So um, if you don't mind sending me an email with your contact information, we can also chat offline. I'd be happy to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. And Erica, just do you know how to get in touch with Cindy if you want to put it in the chat privately to her? Oh, sure. I can do that. And yes. she'll have your information right away. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I can also, I'll, I'll connect you to tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thanks. 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 Um, Louise. Thank you. Um, trying to lower my hand. See, I can't even uh, multitask to that extent. Um, <laughs> Thank you all for everybody who's been working on this. It's it's really cool to see it um, come together and thanks for the opportunity to talk. I was so happy to see the attention to climate change and um, it was interesting looking at this document from just 13 years ago, the phrase, it doesn't appear anywhere in it, I don't think, um, and neither do deer, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, but, and so I, I'm curious about um, the attention you might pay to the tree canopy specifically, the urban tree canopy, and whether there will be any kind of an inventory of, of, of trees in general or street trees in particular. Um, I guess I have an interest in, in thinking of the, the right of way, the public right of way along streets as um, as an environmental resource. Um, and we are losing, obviously, I, I, we all know so, so many trees, um, ash trees, of course, every last one of them just about, and also the red oaks that are vulnerable to leaf scorch, et cetera. And so I, I would, um, I don't know what the plan is for looking specifically at trees. I know trees aren't the only important vegetation <laughs> out there for habitat, um, et cetera, but I'd be interested in, in knowing whether there will be an inventory, whether there will be um, a vulnerability assessment, maybe um, a, um, that sort of looks at the scale of loss uh, and and would be, I, I guess I'm looking for information that will be helpful in two ways, both to, that could inform the development of a 50-year a plan or a 100-year plan where it comes to looking at the tree canopy uh, rather than just the 10-year plan that the master plan tends to sort of confine itself to. Um, and secondly, to help make the connection between environmental resources and public health uh, in a way that informs land use decision-making. So I'm almost out of my three minutes, I'll stop. Thank you. So I'll start and then I guess, Ryan, if you have something to add when I'm done, please do. I do. Um, a couple of things to address there. So, um, our municipal arbor arborist just oversaw a tree inventory that's just being wrapped up now that was done by Davey. Um, so that information will be, which is super helpful, fed right into the ERI. Um, and we'll be looking at, using that data, we'll be looking at areas that are lacking in tree cover and pointing those out. Um, we'll be looking at the species that we have in our inventory. So how much is native, how much is non-native, as you pointed out, which ones are vulnerable species, thinking long-term plans. Um, and other vulnerability uh, items that we'll be looking at, we'll, I'm partnering with 
um, some students at Princeton High School who want to do uh, an ash study and look at a couple of our parks and see what percentage of our forested areas are ash, which will vary, you know, forest stand to forest stand and different soil types, um, but kind of give us an idea of how many ash trees we have lost, uh, what percentage of our forest we've lost with all of the ash dieback, and where the hot spots might be. So that could inform which areas we should be planting more trees or having more um, aggressive restoration efforts because we just lost a whole bunch of our canopy. Ryan, do you have anything to add to that? Well, you, you hit on the, um, I was gonna talk about the street tree inventory, but- um, I stole that. Yeah, you stole that from me. But uh, the, the comparison to see how much we've lost, um, we're definitely going to do that. Um, and we're, we're going to do it pretty much from scratch so we can get our get the most accurate uh, numbers from that. Um, I think that data is going to be important for decisions, both regulatory and uh, land decisions. So that's uh, when I got into the aerials and um, and our own GIS tools to be that we'll be using. Um, that's what I was uh, referencing and talking about. So. Thank you for that. Yeah, we and, really and I stand corrected well. about deer. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Steve Biltner pointed out that deer appears many, many times in the old report. So uh, I may have post-it notes on there, but I obviously didn't read it cover to cover. Anyway, thank you both. Thanks. And then um, council woman liaison, Eve Niedergang has her hand up. I don't know if I count as a member of the public, but since deer were mentioned, um, so I, I don't know, uh, Ryan, Ben, Cindy, you know, of course, we have the information that we've been collecting internally uh, on deer that Jim Ferry, our animal control officer, and also a, a new member of our animal control committee is a graduate student at Princeton who works primarily on large animals in Africa, but lacking any other large exotic animals here, he has in the three or four years he's been in Princeton, been keeping a deer inventory, uh, just his own observations, um, which will both for the animal control uh, committee be really helpful information, but um, I can, if you think that would be useful, we, we can get that information uh, to you, um, you know, for your, your observation, uh, you know, observational, uh, you know, more information on, on, on deer. Um, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to say, I haven't looked at the uh, 2010 uh, ERI in, in quite some time, but um, so it's possible this was in there as well, but the environmental justice aspects of uh, the new ERI um, are phenomenal. And I'm so glad that that's being done. The, the, that information is absolutely critical to our commitment to, uh, to social justice and equity. So I'm really thrilled that's being done. So thank you. Anybody else have a question, comment? If not, we will move on in our agenda. And okay, I don't see anybody else's hand up. So I wanna thank Cindy and um, Ben and Ryan. Thank you so much for taking your time.